Welcome back to the Exchange Server 2016 module on transport services. This module covers message security. So message security is really important because you don't want your messages to get into the wrong hands and you don't want your exchange servers to be exposed. So it's important to always think about message security. So uh, let's talk about security requirements. Uh, obviously, sometimes you need to have things confidential. You want to protect those uh, messages from getting into the wrong hands and, and people um, spying on, on you. So security requirements can mean that you want to encrypt messages and it could mean that you have to implement something like S-MIME that, that encrypts messages or use something like RMS uh, to make sure that the messages wouldn't be opened by anybody that's not authorized to open those messages. And it could also be to the extremes of uh, securing your perimeter network yeah uh, either using firewalls or and or um, deploying edge transport servers yeah so there's there's multiple layers of uh, implementing message security because on the one hand you want to uh, protect the individual message but on the other hand you also may want to protect the end-to-end -end flow, and you want to make sure that this one server that's sending the message and the other server that's sending the message all of that is encrypted and there's no device in between that can look at the, the network traffic and do sniff the network mm -hmm. and uh, figure out messages. Um, sometimes if you send messages to external organizations, you want to encrypt those as well. So there's many things that you can uh, implement and you can consider and make sure that your messages are encrypted and you're not vulnerable to attacks. So uh, the first thing that you have to do when you look at your message uh, security requirements, you have to define what they are. You have to uh, talk to your users and say, you know, do you really have a need to encrypt messages to all users? By default, Exchange inside of the organization will always encrypt messages. So one server sending messages to another server, that will be encrypted using SMTP TLS encryption to encrypt that traffic. So no uh, eavesdropping can take place inside of your exchange organization. But in other cases, uh, you may want to send messages to an internal application in your organization or to a partner organization, which outside of your organization, uh, you have some special contract with them and you want to make sure that those messages travel across the internet also encrypted. So then you have to set up um, security so that even that is encrypted uh, when you send that to those users. So that's another um, requirement. And then maybe you want to restrict certain types of messages flows. Like for example, you want to prevent people from sending uh, certain topics like uh, with DLP where you protect uh, certain uh, uh, words like for example, um, if it's a credit card number or, or it's a, a social PII information. PII information, you want to restrict that. So that's part of your security requirements. And when you implement those security requirements, uh, you can do that with Exchange and you can make sure that your system stays secure and nothing leaks out. It, it, it's definitely something that involves a considerable amount of planning. Um, it, it, also, you need to consider planning for message delivery restrictions. Are there areas in your network where you don't want people to be receiving mail from, say, other departments? Mm -hmm. uh, and um, m maybe even uh, message moderation. Mm -hmm. So you can uh, say, for example, uh, people are, when, for example, I send a message to a distribution list, it needs to go to a moderator first before it's uh, approved and sent to that distribution list. Right. So you have moderation. Um, nobody is allowed to send a message to everybody in the organization. So uh, if you implement um, SMTP security, uh, you're going to need uh, certificates. And uh, luckily in Exchange 2016, when it installs Exchange, it would implement certificates by default and it will use those certificates, self-signed certificates. But if you want to send to a partner organization, you have to use a public CA certificate because that partner organization needs to trust the certificate because there's a key exchange that happens as part of that SMTP traffic. When your exchange server connects to the exchange server, it needs to sort of prove that it is a authoritative server and it's the 
connection that it's expecting. And so it's going to do that via certificate exchange and it's going to tell the a foreign server that uh, here's my certificate that proves my identity. And uh, if that certificate is not part of a public signed certificate, it doesn't prove anything because you are just saying who you are and it wasn't signed by anybody and nobody allowed that to happen. So you need to have uh, public certificates when you want to set up um, secure messaging between partner organizations. You can also set up secure SMTP connections uh, from the internet if you want to. So you can say uh, uh, if uh, some organizations do want to uh, send messages using TLS and you can say I'm going to allow TLS connections into my uh, organizations this is what called what is called opportunistic uh, TLS uh, so I will advertise the fact that I have TLS um, available for anybody that wants to send secure messages to me using TLS and then the in, the connection to me over SMTP will be encrypted uh, so you can implement many security settings on um, your SMTP connectors, as well as uh, authentication settings, like uh, it needs to authenticate like that and, and, and so on. So there's- uh, IPsec, is, IPsec is an option, VPN or a couple yeah. other options. So there's, there's, there's another couple of options as well that you could look at to make sure that your um, uh, connection from that other host that is sending mail, that's secure. You don't just have to rely on SMTP, you can rely on VPN as well because a VPN is encrypted or IPsec that's encrypted. In those cases, it's not really a exchange concept. It's more a uh, infrastructure on the network layer that you're relying on that uh, ensures that it's encrypted. But uh, it makes it uh, uh, in one way less complex because you now fall back to what the network provides you. In another way, uh, you have to trust that it's working well and that it is always encrypted. Um, so you give away a little bit of control by uh, letting somebody else take care of the uh, network encryption. Another um, concept that is always important to remember when you look at message security is to uh, uh, deploy a solution uh, in your network that first scans email for uh, malware and spam before it sends it into the internal network. And uh, Microsoft's offering for, for that is the Edge Transport Server. The Edge Transport Server allows you to deploy a exchange server that is aware of your exchange system in a perimeter network, receive emails, queue that emails, clean them, and then send them to the internal uh, network so that uh, you only send um, the real messages that you want. If you want to set up an Edge Server, you uh, do set up what they call a edge subscription. So you subscribe a edge server in your perimeter network to a uh, mailbox server on your uh, internal network. And that mailbox server is then responsible to keep the edge server's configuration up to date. Uh, it's important to note that this edge server doesn't connect to the mailbox server for its configuration. The mailbox server is connecting to the edge server. This is a, a strong security requirement by some organizations that they don't want internal servers uh, or uh, servers in the perimeter network to be able to connect to servers on the uh, internal network because um, that uh, creates a hole in the firewall. So maybe they don't want to do that. The edge server does have the ability to create, um, connect to the internal servers because they need to send SMTP mail for mail reasons, but not for configuration reasons. So the configuration is pushed from the uh, mailbox server to the edge server. And this is the process of edge synchronization. So I have a diagram here that uh, explains uh, the location of the edge servers as well as uh, uh, how uh, this is set up. So uh, you have your mailbox servers. The mailbox servers uh, is set up um, with a load balancer in your internal network, your enterprise network. Then you deploy edge servers uh, using, uh, 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 you can also use a load balancer, but most of the time people use DNS route Robin for um, load balancing edge servers in your perimeter network. And then you set up your clients or your SMTP uh, 
domains and, and DNS to tell people that when they send messages to your organization, they need to send it to this edge server or uh, some organizations even have other servers before the edge server. So they have, they double up on their protection. They first scan it with another solution and then they scan it with edge servers or something like that. You then, um, it accepts messages from the internet. It checks it for spam, make sure that it's, uh, 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 clean emails and it sends those to the internal network. Uh, so that is uh, the edge server's functionality. This server is uh, also, it was designed to have a very low footprint uh, of, of services. Um, it's an exchange server, but it doesn't need to be a part of the domain. Uh, the domain, you may have a domain that uh, you uh, manage all your servers in your perimeter network, but this server doesn't have to be um, and should actually not be a member of your Active Directory domain from your internal network because you don't want somebody to hack this machine and then gain access to your Active Directory domain. Uh, but the server can be a member of a domain that you may have to manage servers in your perimeter network. So it's not a, a problem to, to it's, it's not like the server needs to be in workgroup mode. It's also got a minimal attack surface. Uh, there's no UI or uh, no ECP used to, for the yeah. management. It's all through the shell, and which means that there's no IIS being used, and that minimizes the uh, or reduces the uh, surface attack exposure. Yes, this this server um, uh, when it needs uh, something like the Exchange admin, admin Center, that means that you need to run web services on that server, and so therefore. IIS is now running on that server, and that becomes a bigger surface attack for people to, to, to attack. So uh, w they purposely removed that and made PowerShell in a way so that it's direct. You don't do, it doesn't use remote PowerShell. You work with the configuration right. directly. It also, for its own configuration, it uses Active Directory Lightweight Directory Services, or ADLDS. Um, to, or it previously it was called Adam Active Directory Application Mode, and uh, it stores its configuration in that Adam directory on that server itself. Um, and the Edge process, the Edge subscription synchronization process, pushes the configuration to that uh, ADLDS directory, but it also encrypts that configuration. So uh, your Edge server knows about all the recipients in your organization, but it's encrypted. So it, um, th you can't, if you hack that uh, ADLDS directory, you can't harvest the whole directory because all of that is encrypted. Uh, the edge server, all the ser edge server needs to do is once it receives a message, it applies the same encryption algorithm on the recipient and it can then compare that hashes between the hashed recipient that's in its directory and the hashed recipient that it just um, created to see if, it's, if this is a valid user. So there's no data that can be compromised in your perimeter network. Um, even uh, configuration items like safe senders and, and safe uh, recipients that people can configure in Outlook, that is also pushed to your edge servers and your edge servers um, knows about your safe senders that you've set up in Outlook because you want to receive messages from certain domains or certain users and um, sometimes it's, it's actually categorized as spam so you can mark them as safe senders. The Edge servers will be aware of those settings be again through the Edge subscription and also hashed so there is not um, any information that can be compromised. Um, when somebody hacks that edge server. So, and you say that pushing happens through the edge sync process. Mm -hmm. uh, what's involved in setting up the ed edge sync so that it happens? So um, to set up edge, uh, you have to um, set up a, a edge subscription. And the way that works is you run a commandlet on the edge server first, and you say new edge subscription, and you give it a file name. And then you take that file name, you copy it to a thumb drive, or maybe you can co uh, connect to the server directly if <laughs> you can temporarily disable the firewall. And you take it to your Exchange server, and then uh, you uh, import that uh, subscription on your internal servers, and then that internal servers is now aware of the edge server that you just added. 
and it knows that uh, there's a new edge subscription and it will try and connect through the firewall to push the configuration. The port that it uses is port 5636 and that is uh, um, 6336 is basically secure LDAP and they um, dedicated 50,000 6336 uh, as the um, port for each subscription. So um, from that point on the exchange servers will reach out and push the configuration to um, the edge server. What happens after that? I assume that there's, there's some sort of schedule that yep. maintains a current copy of uh, the, the, so that the data is in sync between the mailbox servers and the edge transport servers. Yes, so the edge, uh, the, those hub transport servers that is now responsible for the edge servers will reach out to these um, edge, uh, edge servers on a regular basis to update the uh, the configuration and tell it that these new users or these new safe senders or um, needs to tell it about any send connectors that involves those uh, edge servers and so on. So it pushes out that configuration on a regular basis. And it's also quite intelligent because it knows uh, what changed since the last time. So it's, it's, it's only doing delta updates to those edge servers. It's not doing a full synchronization every time. Uh, but there's command lists that you can run test edge subscription to actually see that it's working well and, and there's no problems with the edge subscription. Or you can, if you want to force it, you can run the start edge, edge subscription to force the, um, the configuration to be up to date. So if you have a scenario where you just created a user and you want to immediately receive messages and you don't want to wait for the interval to update the, the recipients, then uh, you can just run the start edge subscription commandlet and it will force an update immediately. I I'm sure that there's a lot more involved in this topic and then if anybody wanted to find out more about it, they could watch the transport course on ED, uh, ed edX. Yes, uh, the, the, there's actually a special lab on uh, edge transport in this course, so I would highly recommend that you guys uh, check that out and, and sign on to the edX course uh, for uh, Exchange Server 2016 Transport Services. So that brings us to the end of messaging security. Uh, stay tuned for our next module on um, transport services.